we're going to bring current flow in as part of our diagnostics along with voltage. In a series circuit like we have here, current is the same in all parts of this one branch we have. Uh, we're, we don't show anything else on the splice for this demonstration purposes. One current flow through the two resistors. In this particular case, the two resistors are equal. So the voltage is going to divide across the two loads. We will have a voltage drop. The voltage drop occurs after the first resistor, or load in this case. And since they're exactly equal, it's exactly half what we started with. We started with 12.6, now we have 6.3. Let me remind you of one of those simple little things we laid out way back in basics. You must have current flow to have a voltage drop. In the grounds, we should have a minimum voltage drop. Here we're looking at 20 millivolts. That's fairly typical. So voltage is going to be constant but current is going to vary by the resistance. Now, since both loads have the identical resistance, they have identical current flow. We have one and a half amps in the left branch. We have one and a half amps in the right branch. And the top is three amps, which is the sum of all of the branches. If we had more branches, we'd have to add them all up. Voltage, as we said, stays the same. All of them are equal assuming we have no unintended resistance, and we'll talk more about that later. Both loads connect to the same splice, where the current splits for each branch. Current splits, voltage remains the same. Grounds are the same. We should have minimum drop of voltage in the grounds with the loads. Now, batteries are no different than resistance. It's just in reverse. If we put batteries in parallel, we charge them at 14 volts, much higher current. The current divides and goes to the three batteries. If we have our three batteries in series, it takes 42 volts, so we can divide the 42 across three batteries, and we have the same current through each battery. Now, the division of the voltage in those batteries is assuming that all batteries are exactly identical in internal resistance. It's the same thing in reverse. We've got to charge them up in order to draw current flow out. Let's talk about pinpointing a problem. We got our two blinking lamps here. The top we got 12.6. On the left we got 12.6. On the right we've got 9.3. You say, wow, the lamp is dimmer, the voltage is low. A performance problem on the right lamp. In this particular case, this is showing a cause a problem caused by a bad splice. Now let's back up a moment. Rather than take a bunch of measurements, let's analyze the circuitry to help identify what part of the circuit is normal. If we can identify performance problems, we can determine the most likely cause of it. We're going to use the circuit diagrams to identify operating conditions. Identify the part of the circuit that's normal. Identify the part of the circuit that's abnormal. What areas are the likely cause of the problem? And then just as important, identify an easy place to test. Going and tearing into wiring harnesses to go test at some splice is very hard to do if you don't already have a good idea that that splice is giving you a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our diagrams that we used earlier and to press on to more complex things. We're going to try to do the easy things first and identify a test point that's accessible and hopefully try to divide the circuit functions with each test if it's possible. If we can divide the circuit functions with a test, that tells us do we go forward or back we got two halves. Which half is it in? Have we gone past the problem or is the problem after our test point? We're going to use the multiple functions like we're looking at here with two lamps and stuff to identify operational patterns. Let's go back. We could just come in here with our bad splice like we had in case one. We can make four different readings. And look, one of them is going back and measuring up in the wiring by the splice. That's hard to do. So could we do this with less than four tests? And I got just as important a question for you. Could you miss this problem if you do the test incorrectly? We're going to go back and remind you of some basics during this. Let's look at another scenario. These are all scenarios we have found on actual vehicles. Case two, everything looks good. We have 12 volts on both lamps, 12.6 volts. But on the right, we have 3.3 volts in the ground going down at a bad splice in that ground. Again, you could miss this problem if you test it incorrectly. We'll talk about why. Third case scenario. Look, we have normal voltage coming to the lamp. We have normal ground voltage, and yet the bulb is dim. 
In this case, it's a bad socket. It could have also been a bad bulb. Let's go see how we could diagnose this efficiently. We're coming in here and we see it's dim. We go, we've got 9.3 volts. What does that 9.3 volts mean? It indicates we have unintended resistance between us and the splice. And how do I know the voltage is good at the splice? Because the bulb on the left is normal. If it's normal, it must be receiving 12.6 volts. We need to spend some additional time talking about this particular set of problems. Now, for this class, we're showing these as simple light bulbs. In the real world, this is a series of problems we had a few years ago with fuel injectors. We had an injector line that was pinched, and it caused extra resistance in the power lead, in some cases, and the ground lead for others. Here's the problem. We have this 9.3 volt drop, indicating we have unintended resistance. The problem with this circuit is it's only in that one branch, and the only load in that branch is the lamp. So if we remove the lamp for testing, there'll be no current flow, and the signal there will read B+, plus because it's reading on an open circuit. It doesn't matter there's unintended resistance between us and the splice. Voltage drops occur when there is current flow. Doesn't matter if that is in the ground or if it's in the power. Here, we're going to read 3.3 volts with a bulb installed. It's indicating unintended resistance in the ground circuit. If we remove the lamp, same problem. There's no current flow, and the voltage reading will be near zero. So yes, we're talking about basic circuits, but we're covering things that are far more important than basics. When we get to the latter sections of this book and video, we're going to bring out the more high-tech things, mass airflow sensors and so forth. But all the principles we're using here apply. We're using these low-tech light bulbs so that we don't get lost in the technology and we focus on the troubleshooting. Let's go talk some more about those grounds we're looking at here.